Marvin, how shocked were you that you were sued initially? Extremely, extremely shocked. You know, I'm, like Dave said, I've never heard of anything like that before. Well, I think that the plaintiffs filed the case first because they wanted to do a preemptive move. Uh, there was a dispute and they could have waited to be sued, but it looks worse if they're on the defending side. So by taking the initiative, they basically preempted the lawsuit. You have since filed a counterclaim. Talk to me about the similarities. When you first heard blurred lines, what did you think? Well, the first thing I thought it was one of my dad's songs, and um, I thought it was a, a remix, but it wasn't. The similarity has to be of the copyrightable elements. So mood and feeling and tempo are not copyrightable and they're not protectable. It's basically music, lyrics, chord progressions, things of that nature that are protected, and that's what they would have to prove the similarity to. There are many songs that sound alike that are not infringements, and it depends really on whether the copyrightable elements are taken, as opposed to just the mood or the feel. Did you have any intentions of pursuing your legal options before they fired the first shot? Didn't even get to that, uh, that point, like I said, you know, they, uh, they felt the need to jump the gun, and so uh, here we are. Tell me what you want, how you want to see this all resolved. I, I want to see my father get, get credit for his work. Marvin uh, is suffering from diabetes, and he, he needs a kidney. So if the publicity that comes out of this causes someone to come forward to help save the life of the son of the famous Marvin Gaye, then that will be a good thing.